Okay, so to start with, we're going to go ahead and open up 123D Design. Now that we've got 123D Design open, I'm going to go up here in the top to where it says Primitives. I'm going to select a sphere. I'm going to give it a radius of, let's say, um, we're in, need to switch to inches. And we'll give it a radius of, let's say, 10 inches. Yeah. And it just puts it wherever it was when, uh, when we hit enter. So I will now go up and I will add another primitive and that's a box. And I'll put it right here. It doesn't matter too, too much exactly where it is, but it also has a radius and we can check the radius or the size by clicking on it and selecting that and it's got 20. I'm going to write down that it's 20 inches because we're going to have to scale that. Currently, we have a sphere that is 20 inches across and a square that is a cube that is 20 inches across. I'm going to um, uh, take the yeah, take the cube and I'm going to move it downwards. So I want to take a quarter of this sphere. And a quarter of that sphere is five millimeters. So I'm going to move it down five millimeters. Um, and I'm then going to move it across until it matches up with and covers the sphere. And I'm not getting it exactly. So I'm going to have to go ahead and hit enter. I'm now going to have to go and scale this. Clicking on it, going down to scale. It says uniform. I'm going to go to non-uniform. I'm going to take the X and I'll do it 2. The Y I'll do 2. I'll leave Z alone. It scales from the center. Because I don't really care if it's weird. All I want is that top bit. So now I go up to um, combine, which is up here. I take the second one, which is subtract. This target is going to be the sphere, and the source will be this modified cube. I hit enter, and all I've got is this little dome. Now we can size it here if we'd like. I'll click on it, and I'll hit I, and it tells us that it's 17.321 inches. We can scale it later, but I'm going to scale it in here. I'm going to go to my handy calculator, and I'm going to divide uh, 36 inches by 17.321, and I get 2.0784. I'll go back here, click on that to exit it, click on it, go here, scale it. Go back to my calculator, 2.0784, 2.0784, I don't think it lets me do that many, so I'm going to do 7.9, it'll be slightly large. And now we hit I, and it's right around 36 inches. Now that we've done that, we can click on the object and we should over here we can send it to make now I've got this I'm going over here to the left and clicking on original size you can see that it's altered it to be the size we had it now I'll um, select our material which you're going to want to go and create a material. I've cr 
created it and called it one half inch ply, 48 by 24. It's important that the higher dimension is the height because it doesn't seem to work in if it's in landscape. You can choose whatever size suits you. Choose that, I hit done. I'm going to choose interlocked slices for the construction technique. And you can see that it's already giving us something very similar to what we want. Oh, it does, uh, we didn't actually select this, sorry. I'm going back up to material and selecting that. So now it's gonna look about right. Now you'll notice that some of those slices are facing the wrong direction. So I'm, uh, I leave these three here, all these things under slice distribution, I'm leaving those alone for now. Um, first and second axis are the number of slices. The notch factor improves the, your ability to assemble it by um, giving you a chamfer on the corners of the notches and the notch angle adjusts those corners. I'm going to click on notch direction and you'll see we get these uh, little handles that we can hold and I never know which one it is so I'm going to click here that one and I'm going to just there we go pull it down to 90 degrees it snaps to every five degrees and uh, there I've got that done. I'm go now going to go to my slice dis distribution and make each of them five. That gives us that shape that you had. It is possible to move these around and change where they are and hopefully undo. <laughs> Apparently not. There we go. Switch this back to by count. You can also set by distance if you want a specific spacing. But I think that looks pretty good. So I'm going to go down to get plans. And it's now given me all of these. I can export them at the bottom in whatever format I want. If I'm going to print them, I'll probably do it in PDF. If I'm going to use it on a router, I'll probably do DP, uh, DXF or EPS. Laser also. Actually, any of them work. I'm going to go there, export, it'll have me sign in, which I think I can do. Hmm, I don't like that. I'm going to try again. I think it exported it somewhere. <laughs> Those are some other ones I've done. I don't know if it's still working on that. But, there we go. I had to sign in now to let me actually save it. I'm just gonna put it on my desktop and I'm going to name it Shelves, and I've saved it as a PDF. Now if I hide it, I've got Shelves.pdf here, and I can open that in a PDF viewer. And there we go. You can now edit it in your editor of choice, and use it in Corel or Illustrator, and edit it to work for you, or print it out on multiple pieces of paper and stick it onto a piece of wood to cut it by hand. That's all you get. I, I hope that's enough to get you through this. If you have any more questions, let me know.